Hello again and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about FOMO in children and teenagers. My name is Tracy Maxfield. I'm a retired nurse, author, speaker, and mental health and stop bullying advocate. And so FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, what exactly is it? So in 2013, the Oxford English Dictionary added a new word. FOMO is an acronym basically meaning the fear of missing out and it is a form of social anxiety characterized by a desire to stay continually connected with what others are doing and what's going on with the world around them. It is a real and increasing phenomenon and actually becoming quite serious that is causing significant stress and anxiety not only in children and teenagers but actually in adults too. And this is not just a Canadian or American problem, it's actually a global phenomenon. FOMO can actually be so intense, it can actually be likened to an addiction. And there are multiple treatment centers being set up globally to actually deal not only with gaming disorders, but now with FOMO. In a recent study, US teenagers reported that 45% of them are near constantly online 22 hours out of 24 I want you to think about that 20 hours out of 24 which begs the question when exactly do these kids have a life do other things and sleep now the most um, favorable sites they visit are YouTube and Instagram and a report indicated last week that pin interest is now becoming a very popular social media site now, when you actually talk to teenagers, many of them laugh and scoff at this and say that FOMO is not an addiction, it's not a problem. It is actually a social connection. And in order for them to be accepted and to be liked and actually to belong, they need to be connected 24 seven uh, because they may miss something that's much more exciting and interesting and newsworthy relevant to all their peers. So for example, a friend woke up with a boyfriend or there was a fight or, a boy got a new car from his parents. Sadly, what's happening is they're not understanding the detrimental impact this is having, not only on their health and well-being, but also on their emotional psyche. What's happening is that basically it is not only a need to be connected, but it's also promoting a generation of kids and teenagers that live by comparison. Um, this constant comparison has a detrimental impact on their mental health and in a nutshell, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, ex-president for many, many decades ago, put it best. He said, comparison is the thief of happiness. Now, Bren Brown, in one of her books, um, did a, a great chapter on comparison and I'm just going to read a couple of lines which really resonated with me and I think says it all. Comparison is really all about conformity and competition. There is no room for self-acceptance, belonging and authenticity. The message is you need to fit in and stand out. You need to be like everyone else, but better. The reality is, is that today our children and teenagers are actually crafting their lives around others and are ensnared in the belief that everyone else's lives are better and happier than theirs. Uh, ironically, um, despite um, being on social media sites all the time and having hundreds, even thousands of online connections, teenagers are reporting in fact that they are more lonely and isolated than they are ever been and this disconnection only leads to more feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, inadequacy, depression, anxiety and of not belonging and for kids today belonging and being accepted by their peers is extremely important. Now there are some very significant um, consequences to FOMO. Um, what research has found that um, kids who spend a long time, multiple hours in digital technology, um, actually have higher levels of stress and depression. And in a recent poll, 60% of teenagers 
said that they felt worried when they found out that their friends were having fun, had gone to a party or were doing things without them. And 51% said they felt anxious if they did not know what all their other friends were doing. Again, FOMO, fear of missing out. Now, other problems is, um, of course, you're gonna have a child or a teenager who has this incessant fear and worrying that they're missing out. What happens is it then results in disconnection with their family, with their parents, and they start missing out on their own life. Um, there is a low self-esteem, low self-worth and confidence, and even loss of their identity because they're wrapped up in um, it's kind of like keeping up with the Joneses, but then even trying to be one step better. There's an increased risk of eating disorders and self-harm. When you think of the chat rooms and the images and the different sites that they go to, we have this um, perception of what is acceptable, what is beautiful, what is attractive, what would get you more friends, more boyfriends. Um, there is also a pressure to use drugs and alcohol, um, smoking cigarettes, marijuana, even vaping, just to keep up with friends and be part of the group. Um, what else happens? Well, as I've indicated, you definitely can have some sleep problems. Um, you may have um, some messed up eating habits because you'll be maybe snacking or using um, junk food or you'll be using high caffeinated beverages just to stay awake so you stay connected. What this happens is that you, you're going to find that you're um, maybe late giving in assignments and you'll have a, um, a poor academic performance. Other things is distracted driving and pedestrian accidents because you've got your nose perpetually in your cell phone or tablet. Cyberbullying is another consequence of FOMO. If you're online all the time and visiting various chat rooms and sites, chances are you're going to encounter cyberbullying. Other things is um, this FOMO, um, engaging in unsafe and risky behaviors. And specifically, I'm talking about the social media online challenges. So if you remember a few years ago, there was the ice water bucket challenge, which was to promote funds for ALS. But now there's one step further for kids. There's the blue whale, there's the car surfing challenge. So riding on the hood or the roof of a car or a truck, think how dangerous that is. And then the fire challenge, so setting oneself on fire. Um, so, what can you do? So I think the first thing is to actually talk to your kids about FOMO and what it is and how it can be affecting his or her life. Um, I think also what you need to do is, you know, review the sites that they're going to, discuss cyberbullying and more importantly, cyber security and safety. Because again, um, as we know, Online, you can create false identities and you can masquerade as a teenager um, and get um, your kids to send nude pictures or inappropriate, inappropriate posts and then find out that it's actually an older man who lives in Australia. So you have to think online, nothing is as it seems. Everyone is hiding behind a screen and they can create any identity they want. And this is imperative that your kids understand that. Also, what they need to understand is that many of the images on posts on social media are either fake or incorrect or they've been touched up and photoshopped and so you know this body image that they see is an illusion and that very very few kids and people in the world actually have perfect lives uh, i think together as a family you need to agree that when you sit down for dinner uh, when you go to a movie or when you're watching a movie at home and you're having family time that you turn off your devices and at bedtime especially agree on a time when everyone turns them off plugs them in in the same room and goes to bed without the devices now this will be a challenge but i think it's just working with your kids um i think another thing is you need to explain that most people only post fun happy wonderful posts and really post about the horrible negative painful things that are going on in their lives um, other things is maybe talk to your kids and encourage them to um, address their concerns so for example if they're not on social media and they're not connected for say three, five, six hours, 
what do they fear will happen? What is actually the worst thing that will happen? And I think when you understand that, you can start getting to the root cause of what is the problem. Um, is it that they fear that they lose their friends? or that everyone will make fun of them, or they may be bullied, or they're missing out. Understand what is precipitating this need to be connected and know everything that's going on. Um, I think other things are talk to your kids about um, values and, and goals. What are their goals? And things like um, integrity and respect and honesty and kindness and compassion and understanding. I think another thing that we need to remember is um, your kids are going to have other kids and idol and adults who maybe they idolize and they want they um, want to be that person. I think the important thing is is that you don't make disparaging remarks about um, whoever your kids like. Ask them why they like them. What qual what good qualities do they have? What are their values? And see if you can draw from what, let's say, for example, um, Justin Bieber or um, the Kardashians. What is it that you they like about them? And what are the good qualities that maybe they can utilize in their own lives and develop? Um, I think another thing is you've got to start explaining to your kids that there's only 24 hours in a day and they have limited time and they have other responsibilities and they cannot be everywhere and available at all times. Uh, I think another thing is review possible um, relaxation strategies with your kids and distractions. So maybe, you know, deep breathing exercises, yoga, mindfulness, journaling, expressing their thoughts and feelings in art, music, poetry. Um, I think what is vital here is that as a parent, remember, you have to set an example. So if you are always on your phone, visiting sites, chatting with other people, then you also have to agree to turn that phone off and disconnect for a set period. If you don't, then why will you kids? Another thing is, um, if your, if your child or teenager starts presenting with extreme emotional problems such as anxiety or an OCD or maybe eating disorder or self-harm or depression, then you need to follow up with a physician for an appropriate assessment because they actually could have a mental illness or a mental disorder. If you find that FOMO is seriously impacting your kids' lives by that, mean disconnection from everything. So they're not doing well in school, they may not even be going to school. They have no friends outside of the social media sites. They're not doing any family time. They're not going anywhere. They're not participating in social activities or um, physical activities. Then they may have an addiction. And not only do you have to go and see, obviously, a physician, but also you need to check out the various resources available on social media addiction support networks. And there's quite a few of them online. Um, and I think um, to conclude, what would be a really good idea is to talk about um, your talk with your children and teenagers about maybe trying a social detox and try and do it as a family. You may also want to talk with the school and other parents and see if they can do like a class or a school detox for like one week or two weeks as a trial period. And I think the good thing there is that if you enlist um, your child or teenager's online friends and everyone agrees to detox, then they won't fear they're missing out as much, if that makes sense. So in closing, I'm just going to briefly list the benefits of a social detox. And this is your child or teenager going offline short term. And then when you when you reintroduce it, because you can't completely keep them offline, but then there would be limits of, you know, specific sites they go to, chat rooms and times that they spend on it. So it reconnects them with the real world. It allows them to be more mindful and be in the present moment. Better performance at school, um, hopefully better eating habits, more restful sleep. Stop, um, hopefully your child or teenager stops feeling so competitive and um, comparing themselves to their friends, an improved mood, more relaxed, more attentive, less anxious. Um, obviously a big one, protects their privacy. 
um, hopefully conquers their fear of missing out when they see that, you know, their friends are still their friends and life goes on and it's not been a huge big deal. For some of them especially, it will help them stop obsessing about past events, maybe past mistakes, or even maybe an ex-boyfriend with a new girlfriend, because um, lots of them, as you know, keep stalking them indirectly, finding out what's going on, and then beat themselves up if the other person is having more fun and is better. Um, I think it also enables your child or teenager to connect face to face with family and friends and siblings and maybe um, you can then enlist family time and engage them in maybe sporting or outdoor physical activities which is really beneficial for their mental health. And I think it's an opportunity again to maybe um, act on some of their goals or, or dreams that they previously mentioned with you and devote some time to that. or even connecting with online friends but without the phone so they can have a pizza night or go to the skateboard park or go to a, or come over and watch a movie or just something where you're just taking that time away from the social media device the computer the laptop the tablet the phone and enabling them to appreciate what's around them in the world and also the face-to-face -face connection with people because when you're texting and typing all the time um, lots of kids have lost the art of actually listening and also having um, a conversation that that helps and benefits them and i think we need to start promoting that again um, and so i hope you found this information about four more helpful um, next time I'm actually going to be talking about one of the personality disorders, histrionic personality disorder in children and teenagers. Sadly, this one is rapidly increasing, especially in teenage girls. So um, please consider pressing the button below and subscribing to my YouTube channel and then you'll receive um, updates whenever a new YouTube video and blog post is made. And also please check out my website www.tracymaxfield.com where there is the accompanying article to this YouTube video on FOMO. Thank you.